Welcome to the Catalyst Life Coaching Podcast with John Kim and Noelle Cordeaux. If you're inspired to begin your own life coaching practice or just want to learn a little bit more about what it's all about, visit journey.co. That's J R N I dot co for more information. Your adventure awaits. Ready to discover your niche as a coach? John and Noel have collaborated on a special Finding Your Niche guide that will help you unlock your unique story and discover your niche as a coach. Head to jrni.co slash podcast to get your guide now. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about how discovering your strengths can change your career prospects. This is such an interesting topic, and of course, with us, Miss Positive Psychology Herself, Noelle, Noelle Cordo. Oh, I like that. You like that? <laughs> I like that. I'll take it. That sounds good. Yeah. Whenever I hear the word strength, it reminds me of, of course, Positive Psychology, which reminds me of Journey Coaching, and of course, you. Oh, awesome. Yeah. All good things. All yes. good things. Yeah. So, you know, tackling the job thing, we talk a lot about the way that work is changing and concepts of work are changing. And I think it can feel really, really scary to people mm -hmm. at first. For sure. And I wanted to first take this concept from an anthropological perspective. Oh, interesting. Because, okay. Yeah. So right now, like right this exact moment in modern day America, our career is something that culturally defines us. When right. you meet someone, the, the very first thing that most folks say is, yeah, what do you what do, you do, do? For a exactly. What do you do? Right. But that wasn't always the case. That's new. It, it only mm. began um, after the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. In fact, folks used to govern themselves, society, perceptions, and judgments of each other based on family bonds, mm. um, based on geographical location, and based on the concept of character. Right. What kind of man was this? Was this a good man? You know, is this an honorable man? And the concept of character really got lost after the Industrial Revolution when folks left their family of origins, they moved into cities, and no one really knew each other or had a good way to um, form judgments about who somebody might be. Right. You know, the next time I'm at a party and someone asks, hey, what do you do? I'm going to answer, I'm a good man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's take yeah. it back. <laughs> Yeah, one of our coaches um, answers that question when somebody says, you know, um, what do you do? She says, I do fine. Oh, right. Th th this is, yeah, it's basically you should have asked me how I was, not what I do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's an interesting concept, you know, and, and when we kind of get wrapped around the axle with all this stuff of scarcity and jobs and meaning and who am I and what will all of this do to me in my life, yeah. it, it helps to to remember that, you know, society is a work in progress and that the way things are now will change. Yes, uh, especially today where um, we are no longer on the singular career path. Uh, we have many passions and today more than ever, I think, uh, especially with the internet and all the things that you can build, um, you don't have to just do one thing or have one path. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and the historical roots are really important here, too, because the what happened after the Industrial Revolution was people needed a way to evaluate each other. And that's when designer goods came into being. So if someone had, you know, a gold watch that mm -hmm. indicated that they made enough money to be able to afford that watch. And so money and things began to symbolize um, quality for folks in terms right. of how we judge each other. Right. So we, when we're talking about careers today and jobs today and how we define ourselves, I've had so many clients tell me, I want to have X degree or X job so that I can buy the house, yep. the car, shoes, right. a bag, you know, all external material signifiers. And that's 
part and parcel of what we know to be the hedonic treadmill. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I definitely fall into that. Uh, I think the only difference today with me is, uh, you know, of course, I love my toys and all that, but they just they don't define me. And they're definitely that's not what I'm going after. I think they're the byproduct of, you know, finding building a life based on meaning. And then if you want a few motorcycles or whatever you're into, then that's cool. Yeah, it's it's meaning, but and it's and meaning is actually part of well being. Right. So you know the what the hedonic treadmill is is whenever you get a shiny new toy, like a promotion, a new house, a new car, you know whatever it is, it has a three to four month shelf life mm. before the shine wears off and that item no longer makes you feel happy or satisfied, and then you're looking for the next hit. You're looking for the next thing. Can that can that also be a person or no? The hedonic treadmill. No, it's not a person. No. Okay, good. No, it's, <laughs> that's not, that's yeah, good. No, it's, it's it, that's a different conversation. That's a different right, podcast. Right, right. Um, you know, it, it's based on possessions, and so right. you know, why are we talking about all of this in relationship to assessments and career change? And you know, the fundamental point that I I wanted to get at is that. None of these things, the career that defines you, the house, the car, the job, the degree, mm -hmm. none of these actually contribute to well-being. Right. To your well-being as a human. And we know what does contribute to your well-being as a human. It's, the, it's Seligman's perma theory. So the things that do actually improve your life, improve the quality of life, give you life are positive emotions. Mm hmm uh, intellectual engagement and interest. Yes. Positive relationships. Yep. A connection to meaning, being part of something that's greater than you and purpose. And then finally, accomplishment or achievement, which can be measured either uh, mentally or physically, which I think is interesting. Yes. And if you're listening, um, rewind what Noel just said because this is a great way to actually think about your alignment and if these things are absent in your life uh, they may be things to to visit uh that that's higher on your priority than 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 other things yeah it's yeah. it's a it's kind of turning this whole idea of how we define ourselves on its head and saying mm -hmm. you know the career or the the thing that i have that provides me with my livelihood and material possessions may not actually bring me authentic happiness or genuine genuine well-being yeah and a lot of people are stuck and they're looking for something different. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to figure out, well, what's getting in the way of, of this feeling of stuckness? You know, why aren't people able to attach to the tenets of PERMA, positive emotions, engagement, relationships, meaning, and authentic accomplishment? And there's a series of points. So the first thing that gets in the way is lack of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. around what makes you tick. And this includes your interests, your skills, your abilities, um, and really kind of dropping down inside what makes you content, what happens inside of you when you're in flow. Right. These are, these are questions that many of us don't even ask ourselves because we are so used to um, just our routine and our Da daily grind and we forget yeah. to ask ourselves these questions yeah for sure exactly and so you know another thing is lack of knowledge regarding potential job and career options mm -hmm. so people don't even know what's out there in terms of training requirements um, salary ranges market outlooks future roles stuff like that another thing is um, uncertainty a yeah. lack of confidence yep. in particular areas. Not knowing what's to come, what could happen. Not, Yep. And then there's stress and pressure. Right. And responsibilities of change that people are like, ah, I think I would rather just really suffer. And then here's the big one is lack of immediate gratification. Mm, that's interesting. Just it it, ex interesting. expand on that. What do you mean by lack of? You mean because they're not getting it right away? Yeah. So when we're looking at PERMA, 
Seligman's theory on PERMA, which is mm -hmm. the, the recipe for authentic happiness. And again, that's positive emotions, engagement, positive relationships, meaning and accomplishment. If mm -hmm. you're taking that theory and saying, okay, let's live from the inside out versus the outside in, and yes. let me dedicate my time to my actual purpose. So meaning in work is essentially when our work is aligned with who we are. Mm, right. Who we are and what we believe in and what we value, right? All of that. Y yeah. So if we're, if we're taking that as a concept, that used to be perfectly fine. You know, think about our parents' generation. Think about the, you know, the 60s and 70s when life was kind of wide open and things weren't so expensive. You could still make a good living as a musician or an artist during that period of time. So it, it takes time and dedication to figure out what your purpose is, what your passion is, and then to dedicate yourself to building that craft over a good many years. That grind, the grit that is required to stick with something through disappointment, through pain, through anguish, that's what ultimately leads to long-term satisfaction, authentic, deep life satisfaction and meaningful accomplishment. Yeah. And do you think with today, because everything is delivered so fast and it doesn't matter if we're talking about a meal or even a date, you know, we do it through our phones, uh, we call uh, Ubers, all of that. Do you think that we're now trained to um, be have be more want more instant gratification? So it's like almost like we have no tolerance to wait anymore. Exactly. And that, that is a, that is a massive part of the problem. And, you know, because people aren't good at things immediately or they're using superficial, um, comparative measures for this is what I should be doing. How much money can I make? You know, I'm just going to be in the rat race. It's causing widespread misery. Yeah. So if anyone can relate to this, what do they do about it? How do they find their strengths? So the the assessment that we teach in the Catalyst Intensive is the VIA Character Strengths Assessment. And it is my favorite assessment. Um, it represents the full spectrum of human goodness. There are 24 different character strengths. And each character strength represents a pathway towards authentic flourishing. And from a career coaching perspective, it's really, um, it's a revolutionary way to be thinking about this, about, okay, how do we set someone up to live from the inside out versus the outside in? And how can we lean into our character strengths, which represent such things as hope, mm. zest, social intelligence, our capacity to love and be loved, our relationship with humor, um, curiosity and zest for life and appreciation of beauty and excellence. Those are just a couple of examples, but you know, let's just take appreciation of beauty and excellence as a character strength. If someone holds that as one of their, their top five strengths, mm -hmm. um, and your top five strengths are, are essentially what gives you the opportunity to experience flow. Right. And they're not considering their lives or the context of their lives or the context of their work lives, where we spend so much of our time in terms of appreciation of beauty and excellence, that human will shrivel and die. That's really interesting. Um, it is. And, 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 and I think also like shrivel and dying inside, even if you are technically alive, it's, you're still shriveling and dying. Exactly. Yeah. And, and when I talk about this stuff, when I teach it in the intensive, it's, it's from an emotional perspective. Right. If someone has a top character strength as their capacity to love and be loved, which I do, um, and I'm in a work environment that's negative, that's mean, that's, um, that Toxic. derision is, to, yeah, yeah, I would emotionally shrivel and die. Yeah. Yeah. And also it doesn't, um, help with the other one, which is positive emotions, mm -hmm. you know, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, kind of looking at this through a completely different lens and saying all of the things that I was taught that are supposed to sustain me in life, like money and a house and a car are great, but they're not actually going to contribute to well-being. It's just sugar. We're talking it's about protein. Just sugar. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of other assessments out there that people use, uh, especially for career coaching. So I wanted to do a little bit of a comparative analysis because I'm so committed to the VIA. Um, so the, the two that I compared against are the Strengths Finder, which we've all heard of. It's a pretty common one. And then uh, the DISC assessment. And what I thought was really interesting about both the DISC and the Strengths Finder is that they both looked at behavior, predictive and comparative ways that people behave. Um, so an example from DISC is if you took the DISC assessment, um, one of your outcomes might be, this person is direct, forceful, and outspoken with opinions compared to the VIA character strengths assessment, which says this person has a high capacity for zest, for experiencing hope. They are great with humor. They have high social intelligence and they have a strong capacity to love and be loved. Mm. Very different. Very different. Yeah. One is external and one is internal. Yep. Yep. And, you know, the piece about external versus internal is sure, yeah, we're all out there, we're all moving around the world, but we actually live in the forest of our interior. And so until we start tending to the garden that makes up our interior lives, we're not going to be able to harvest the fruits of authentic happiness. Yes. And, you know, if there's anything that you're going to take away from this episode, it's when um, Noel says to live inside out instead of outside in. And it's something that I've been kind of, uh, well, I've, I've experienced myself, but, it's, you know, it's a flag that I've been running with for the last decade. And I really think that if you put action behind that mindset, uh, your life will change. So whether that means, you know, uh, getting a new job or a different relationship or new friends or whatever, if you hold on to this idea that I'm going to live inside out instead of outside in and hold on to that with two hands and then put a plan in action behind that, then you're going to live from a strength perspective, a strength place instead of a, a, a negative disqualifying the positive uh, place. If that makes oh, sense. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. Because you're no longer thinking about how do others perceive me and what can I get? And you're you're thinking about, you know, who am I and what do I need? Yes. So in my 20s and 30s, I was all outside in, not inside out. And I, I think that's like if I was to narrow it down, that's probably one of the um, greatest changes. Uh, it's probably one of the greatest mindsets that changed my life is, is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I, I had to learn the lesson um, from an eating disorder perspective of saying, you know, okay, outside out, outside in doesn't work. <laughs> inside out does. Yeah. And it's the whole dying inside, you know, it's the whole yeah. hiding. It's the whole, you know, and I think when that happens, you know, going back to uh, positive emotions, and that really hits me because when I was in my 30s and 20s, um, I never experienced positive emotions. And that's different than just feeling positive. We're talking about emotions and, and, and trying to create positive emotions uh, daily. And of course we dip, but if they're more positive than negative, and that is kind of what your life produces, uh, then that creates joy and that creates, you know, all the things that empower us and, and, and allow us to live inside out instead of outside in. It actually changes your brain chemistry. Mm, yeah, it's, for sure. In, inducing positive emotions um, creates an atmosphere in your brain that wards off the impact of your nervous system and creates like a force field of resiliency. Yeah. And, you know, Noel is big on gratitude. And I think a lot of people can't even get to gratitude or that just becomes kind of a, um, a, a list or a, a, a going through the motions because they're not rewiring their brains to, um, to accept and open and truly feel gratitude because they're not feeling or have experienced positive emotions. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's simple. It takes 10 to 20 seconds of sitting in the positive emotion. And if you start thinking about 
all of these things, positive emotions, engagement, healthy relationships, searching for meaning, and working towards small mastery experiences of accomplishment, these are like fruits and vegetables. You know, we all know that if we eat junk food, we feel like crap. And if we eat healthy foods and fruits, it's the same with your emotional life. It's the same with your career. It's the same with your relationships. You need to feed yourself. Yes. And Noelle, thank you for such an important reminder uh, and dialogue about uh, strength and also living inside out instead of outside in and guys listen this is 50 percent. you guys have a, a blueprint or an angle or a program the other half uh noel and i cannot do for you and it's something that you have to do yourself and i believe you should start today indeed we'll have a great one thanks for the chat thank you be well